Now I'm going to do something a little bit different with this review. Since I know there are a lot of people who are sort of on the fence about whether or not they want to watch this show, they're kind of waiting to hear what others have to say about it first. So I'm going to do a mostly non-spoiler review or reaction to the first two episodes of The Acolyte, and then tomorrow I will do a video that dives into all the details and discusses more of the story. Though, yes, I will give you my overall opinion of the story thus far in this video, I just won't go into many details. And I say this is going to be a mostly non-spoiler review because there may be some things in here that are borderline spoiler, but nothing that's really going to ruin anything major or important. Not that there is honestly much to ruin thus far anyway. I feel like nothing has really surprised me about it so far, for better or worse, I suppose. In fact, as a lot of you know, there was supposedly something in a kind of teaser trailer about a week or two ago that many thought was not only going to be a major spoiler, but that it would more or less ruin the big twist of the show, the big reveal, if you will. That being, and it's not a spoiler anymore, so don't worry, but that being that the main character played by Amanda Stenberg was a twin or that she would be playing twins. However, the fact that, yes, she is playing twins or that there are twins in the show, that has not only been mentioned in some of the marketing stuff in the past few days here, but as I kind of guessed would be the case in a video where I discussed all this, that gets revealed that there are twins. It gets revealed very early on, and it's not by any stretch a big twist or reveal or anything of the sort. And so to get into it now to answer the question, I think most of you are looking for me to answer, that being, did I think it was good? Did I like it or what? Well, I will say that, and I'll be honest here, I'm going into this or went into this not looking for a reason to not like it or anything like that. I want to and will be as fair as possible. But I have been rather skeptical of this series or what it would ultimately be, mainly because of how this will potentially affect the canon about how it seems like the Jedi and Sith will encounter each other a hundred years before the prequels, which doesn't seem like it should happen based off what Ki-Adi Mundi had said in the prequels. And I also fear that this will not, shall we say, paint the nicest picture of the Jedi and could potentially sort of make the Sith or Dark Side users look more sympathetic than I think they should. As I've said before, I don't want Dark Side users sort of justified or that it is the fault of the Jedi that they exist. I don't ever want Star Wars to be used to justify the existence of evil. And so anyway, with me going into these first two episodes, a bit skeptical, I will say that it came out the other side thinking they were decent episodes, but certainly not great. There are some issues I had with it, mainly the pacing. It felt very rushed in my opinion. And sure, to be fair, Star Wars tends to have some very quick pacing, and it likes to throw you right into the middle of the action, right into the story, and then you have to kind of figure it out as you go. But here it feels so quick that I think the characterization really, really suffers. There were only a couple times where it slowed down at all and really wanted to let the characters just be characters or be people for a moment. Instead, they were just kind of prop pieces to get the story going from one scene to the next. And I mean, we're two episodes deep, and mind you, both episodes are rather short. One is about 40 minutes, the other around 30. And so anyway, we're two episodes deep, roughly 70 minutes into it. And I don't find myself really caring about any of the characters all that much because we don't really know them all that much. None of them have really stood out and there's already been a few instances where I find myself really confused by their actions. Where they do something and I don't know why they did that or how they could allow that to happen. And part of this is because the show is very intentionally trying to be vague and mysterious. There is this event that has happened in the past that clearly something happened that has shaped the destiny of many of our characters, and there is going to be a big twist involved with it. It's not going to have happened the way we were initially told it did. And Leslie Headland, the showrunner, has said she took inspiration from the old Kurosawa movie called Rashomon, where a samurai is killed and you get multiple points of view as to how that actually happened, how the murder took place essentially. And all of them are kind of plausible and dependent on that person telling the story. And you're never exactly sure what the truth of the matter is or how it really went down. And I think we're going to do something very similar to that here. There's also something in here in the second episode that a Jedi does that I don't think any Jedi would ever do ever under any circumstance. Which ties into this whole mystery and is really supposed to pique your curiosity, you could say really make you ask or wonder or think, 
what could have possibly happened way back then, or 16 years ago, that he would do this of all things right now. And speaking of the Jedi, they certainly do feel very cold and detached overall. Not all of them, that is just the general sense you kind of get from them. And thus far, they do feel, and I think this is very intentional, Hedlund did say the show wasn't going to be kind to the Jedi, but they do come off feeling more like galactic police, a galactic police force than Jedi. Along with this, they also feel very, I think, bureaucratic might be the best way to put it. It's all about doing things by the book rather than any sort of following the will of the Force or trusting their feelings. There's a point where the Jedi is on the trail of the murderer and instead of just following the very obvious clue and where they should go next, they have to come back to the temple to have a meeting because it's procedure. And to me, the way the Jedi are presented so far almost feels like this should be taking place after the prequels. Or is what the Jedi would be like if the Jedi we see in those films and the prequels had gone on without interruption or if the Clone Wars had never happened? In other words, thus far this doesn't feel like a build-up to the prequel Jedi. This feels like it goes beyond what they were then. And as someone who has read The High Republic, who has been keeping up with it, and mind you those books, at least the first and third phase, they take place some hundred years before this show does. But I can't help but feel like something has gone horribly wrong with the Jedi since those books and comics, or in the hundred years since they occur. And maybe something has, I don't know, Phase 3 isn't done yet, the whole thing isn't done yet. But to me, there is this sense of disconnect from those books. And I say that as someone who, for the most part, likes the portrayal of the Jedi in the High Republic books. I like what they've done with them so far, they do feel kind of Jedi-like. Yet you can also start to see the tiniest cracks in the foundation. Or you can understand maybe how down the road, well down the road, things could go wrong. But in this show it feels like, and maybe it's just me, I don't know, but it feels like something is just way off about the Jedi Order, more than it should be at this point in time anyway. Even though, outside of that one thing a Jedi would never do, in my opinion, there's been nothing else that sort of overtly paints the Jedi in a bad light. It's just this general vibe you get from them that feels very off. Nor is there anything canon breaking just yet. Everything I think works for the most part. You can see how it might go awry with some things, but so far so good in that department. Though I have heard that it is supposed to be in the third episode where something happens that will destroy the canon forever or change our perception of the force or something. I do not know. I have tried to steer clear of whatever this might be, whatever this leak is, or it's not really a leak. The third and fourth episodes have been seen by a lot of reviewers, so it is known what happens in them. But anyway, I am trying to go into this open-minded. I don't want to go looking for a reason to not like this show any more than I have with all my skepticism that I confessed to earlier. I do want to give this a fair chance, and so far, no, it's not bad. I'm sure some out there will say it's the worst thing Star Wars ever, that it is terrible and atrocious and all that, but it's not bad. It is missing something. It is, I think, hoping that this mystery event in the past is kind of enough to keep you wanting more, but so far I'm just not totally sold on that or care that much about it, nor am I really all that vested in the characters. And you gotta do at least one of those two things out of the gates or early on in a show, usually in episode one. I either gotta like at least one of the characters, if not more, so that I'll be patient with the story and or the setup. I am all for a slow burn when the characters themselves can grab and hold my attention or make me want to know more about them or where they might be going or where they came from, but that's not exactly happening here. Or I've got to be interested in the overall premise or maybe something else that is unique about it or just something else about the story grabs me and makes me want to know more. It can be pretty much anything about it and enough so that I'll give the characters time to develop. But if both those things are absent, if both the characters are not grabbing my attention or there's nothing about the premise that really makes me want to watch the next episode, then I am going to check out. And if this wasn't a Star Wars show, if I wasn't committed to watching it, because of course I'm going to watch and review Star Wars, good or bad, but if it wasn't Star Wars, I'd probably maybe give it one more episode. And if it didn't sink the hook in, if something didn't really catch my interest about it in the next episode, I honestly don't know that I'd care to watch episode four, that I would feel like I'm missing anything. And I'm not trying to pass any sort of final judgment here. Again, I don't think these episodes were bad. I just think they were lacking somehow. I think, again, the pacing was a bit off. 
It just felt like things kept happening. We were going from one scene to the next. And we forgot that we need to care about the characters in the process. Again, it's not bad. There is something there. There is potential there. But they really need to learn how to polish it, if that makes sense. It's like there's a diamond in there somewhere. Or maybe not a diamond, I don't know. But there's a gem of some kind in there. There's something you can do with this series that would make it work and make it probably pretty good. But the question is, can they pull it off or not? Well, that's going to be all I got for you this time. And like I said, tomorrow or maybe later today, depending on where you are in the world, I will have a deeper dive into these episodes up. I'll go over the story and some of the other things more. But of course, you don't have to wait for all that to tell me what you thought about these episodes. You can take to the comments below right now and tell me what you thought of them. And if you're someone who hasn't seen it and doesn't want any spoilers, I would recommend steering clear of the comments. But anyway, leave those comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.